Hello everyone and welcome back. With the engine now of the car, it's time to give it all a good clean. So yes, hello everyone, and thank you very much for joining me once again. Now that the engine is out of the car, I can give it all a really good clean, start powder coating bits and pieces, plus that's then going to allow me to do things like the time belt and the clutch. So what I really want to do first, though, is make sure I give this thing a really good going over, give it a good clean, same with the engine bay, because it is just absolutely covered in blue sanding dust, cobwebs, leaves just general debris so that's what i'm going to be taking care of today maybe even taking some bits off and get them in the powder coating oven same with the engine bay i just need to give that all a really good scrub up because again just same as the engine covered in blue sand and dust and just general debris so let's get cracking cleaning this up and then we can start taking bits off and put them in the powder coating oven Okay, so first off what I did was I used some APC all-purpose cleaner from Easy Car Care and then I just went over it with a little detailing brush just trying to get into all the little grooves especially around like that oil filler cap and stuff just where there's so much dust and stuff. So after I did that I then decided to hit it with some proper engine degreaser hopefully just allowing everything to sort of wash away off the block itself. Then I did the same thing in the engine bay as well because as you can see that was quite a bit of a mess as well. Okay so I've given this and the engine bay a very quick clean. There's still loads of little areas in this engine that I can't quite get to without taking off any bits and pieces which is obviously what I want to do next anyway. However it already starting to look a little less like junk and more like an engine. So what I want to do next is start taking off like the inlet manifold because then that way I can really get into the rocker cover and all those bits and pieces. I need to remove this exhaust manifold anyway. I've had to cut it because whoever had the custom power flow back box built for it, they just welded it directly to this manifold. There's also a patch underneath and it's just an absolute mess. So I'm going to have to buy another one of these anyway. However, they're proving quite difficult to find. Every time I see an aftermarket one pop up on eBay, they seem to pretty much go straight away. So I just need to keep my eyes peeled on eBay in particular and see when they become available and get one ordered as soon as possible. So this is the main reason why I wanted to take off the inlet manifold and everything. Just look at all this crap and rubbish just sat on top of the rocker cover. Also, on the inlet manifold, I think this is called a T-Viz system or something like that. So as you can see, these two are moving. These two here absolutely seized. So I'm gonna have to sort them out before we put this back together. However, first, I need to obviously get rid of all of this rubbish. I'm gonna take the rocker cover off because that's one of the things I want to powder coat as well. So pulling off this rocker cover and the remainder of the inlet manifold was actually proven to be quite tricky. There's so many nuts and bolts holding these things in. And obviously I was having to move like cables and all that thing, you know, all that kind of stuff out of the way, put to one side. Eventually I then found that there was even more like vacuum res reservoirs and all sorts tucked up behind, which made this quite difficult as you can see right now. Okay, so you join me on a new day. The last time I was up here, I spent a solid eight hours straight just cleaning, wire wheeling, cleaning some more, degreasing, and powder coating loads of parts. So I've got bits like the inlet manifold. I've done all three parts in black. I also have these like random brackets and stuff, which obviously just come off the engine. Here's another, another little part here. I've also done some of the other bigger brackets in orange. This is the tensioner for the auxiliary belt that goes around the alternator and the aircon compressor. Then there's these two like random supports which help support the inlet manifold uh, off the block. So again, really nice. And then obviously the other biggest part I've done is the, I mean it's covered in rubbish at the minute, but the rocker cover gasket as well. Rocker cover, sorry, not the gasket. But talking of gaskets, I have got the complete gasket and seal kit here. Here's one half, that's the top end. And I've already opened the bottom end because I just wanted to make sure I had every part available, which is there. Then once we've done all those seals on the bottom end and on the top end, we can then take off the gearbox and replace the clutch, which I've now had delivered as well. So 
The reason why it took me eight hours to take all this off, clean it, paint it and everything, I did spend a bit of time on this uh, rear subframe as well. I don't know if you quite saw it when I took it out of the car, but it was a real mess. So I did spend a good few hours trying to clean this up and powder coat it, which as you can see, it looks pretty good. It's not my best work, but I've also done the anti-roll bar as well in orange, and I have also fitted the polybushed anti-roll bar bushes on the rear as well. So once all the engine and everything's good to go, that can now be bolted into its place and it's gonna look a lot better than what it did when I took it off. So now that I've got all these little bits and pieces done, what I really wanna do is just give the engine another once over with some cleaner and then I've got some engine enamel paint in graphite, which I wanna go over just the block with. So once I've done that, then we can actually start to replace all these seals and the time belt kit, water pump and all that kind of thing. So. Let's crack on with cleaning this up and painting it. Okay, so I know you can't really see it from this angle, but I've given the block two coats of that engine enamel paint. It looks pretty good to be fair. It's, it's nice and clean. It, you know, you're not really gonna be able to see it when it's back in the car anyway, but for peace of mind, it's all nice and clean. It looks good. Um, I also started to put on some of the bracketry that I've powder coated, so that's the alternator tensioner there with the brand spanking new alternator. I knew that the old, the old alternator wasn't charging, so I knew I was gonna need one anyway, and for the sake of 100 quid, just brand new one. Um, so what I've also done is I've taken off the time belt and water pump and oil pump. Now, I'm really pleased that I've bought the water pump kit because this water pump is not in the best condition. It's really notchy and sometimes it seizes, like it seizes there now, then it passes. So again, that's just fit for the bin. The oil pump assembly is actually fine. Again, I just need to replace like all these seals that I've got in that kit over there. Now, this cam belt, again, I'm really happy that I've decided to go down this route of preventative maintenance because there's not a single mark in brand name or anything on this belt. And it was so loose that I almost was able to pull it off the end the, the gears without actually adjusting the tensioner. So that is definitely fit for the bin. But what I wanna do now is I wanna take off this entire oil pump assembly here, which means I just need to lift the engine up with my engine crane and take the sump off. Once I take the sump off, I can take the strainer off and then this whole assembly will come out. I wanted to do this anyway. Again, preventative, measure, uh, you know, preventative maintenance. I've got the gaskets and everything for the uh, sump and everything there, so I might as well do it. Plus, somebody has used some, I don't know, that horrible rubbery sealant on this sump at some point, which isn't great. So again, I wanna get rid of that, clean it all up, stick the new sump gasket on. And then once we've done all that, we can actually start bolting everything back together on this engine. Then we can take the gearbox off and then we can replace the rear main oil seal and then the clutch. Then we've got the gearbox back on, then this engine is ready to go back into the engine bay. Okay, so everything is now off and cleaned. I have cleaned all the back end where the gasket sits, done the same on the water pump housing. The gasket sits on there, sits here. So now I'm just gonna replace all of these gaskets. I've also taken out the um, seal as well, which obviously I'll push a new one in place. Then we can bolt everything back together and then we can start getting the uh, gears off, replace those seals and then time belt kit back on and then everything should be done.
Okay, so we have a freshly powder coated sump. I actually wanted to do it in black, but unfortunately I've run out of black powder. So I just did it in orange just to make it look a little bit better. It was a, quite a state. I've tried to clean it up as best I can. Not great, but definitely a lot better. And I'm using these lovely little hex head bolts rather than the standard crusty, yeah, 10 mil ones. So I've put them all in, apart from this one, obviously I've got my hand. Again, you're probably never ever gonna see it, but just looks quite nice. New cork gasket on instead of that horrible sealant. I did clean up both faces, one of the sump and of the actual block. So we should never have any oil leaks from the sump. I've put everything back on the engine. So oil pump, the tensioner, water pump, and I now have stumbled upon a massive issue. Okay, so now everything is back together on the side of this engine with fresh gaskets, fresh seals. Sump's back on with its new sump gasket and those lovely sump bolts. So the only thing that was left to do really was to put the time belt on. And this is where the issue has occurred. So here is my new time belt. And here is my old time belt. As you can see, the new time belt is considerably shorter. So I went onto my eBay purchase history to have a look exactly what I ordered. And stupidly, I have ordered a 3S FE engine time belt kit, not a 3S GE, which this engine is. I'd obviously just seen the 3S and hit buy without actually doing any actual digging. So I also think the water pump's gonna be an issue as well because I've counted the teeth on the one that I've just installed and it's 22 teeth on that pulley. And on the original water pump, it is 23 teeth. So again, the fact that the belt's shorter, less teeth, that's gonna cause an issue. So I've now ordered a proper 3S GE water pump and I've now bought a 178 tooth tone belt, which this is. So unfortunately, I'm pretty much stumped now. I can't really go any further. I'm not gonna start taking the gearbox and clutch off now because that's gonna mess with the bottom end timing. Yes, I could just put it back in. However, I don't wanna to have to faff around and what if they end up doing a full rotation and I don't know, uh, you know, and I don't remember that. So it's just gonna save a lot of hard work if I can just wait for the new time belt kit and the water pump to arrive. That way I'm not then having to mess around and in fear of me I don't know, 180 degree the engine or something silly like that. So unfortunately, that has stumped me this weekend. I was really hoping to get this all back together, ready to put in the car for the following weekend. So that's put me a week behind my schedule, but unfortunately, it just is what it is. Parts, you know, my fault, should have looked. But yeah, so until next weekend, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.